Hey guys, Steve here again with another episode of Coffee and Compost. Uh, probably one of the most common questions I get uh, centers around uh, why the worms will crawl up the sides of a worm bin. New vermicomposters get kind of, uh, kind of alarmed when they see the worms are not necessarily in the bedding but are exploring the walls and the lids of worm bins, especially uh, enclosed uh, worm bins like the Urban Worm Bag, like the Hungry Bin, like the Worm Factory 360, or like a Rubbermaid bin that has a lid on it. Um, there are four main reasons why this could happen. Uh, so we're gonna cover those here today. Um, one of those reasons is kind of alarming uh, and should, be, should cause you some concern and the other ones are really not that big of a deal. So let's cover the first one first, which is that the worms may actually be trying to leave your worm bin. Uh, if you are seeing uh, hundreds, if not thousands of worms that are gathering up uh, together up near the edges uh, uh, where, the, where the openings may be or where the lid may come off, uh, that is a sign of stress. Anytime you see worms that are clumped around each other uh, in, a, in a big ball, and I'm not talking about a big ball around food, I'm saying just around each other, that is a sign of stress. And if you see that with the worms that are kind of up around the top of the, 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 the top by the, the, the lids, let's say you have a Rubbermaid bin, uh, then, then that is a bit of a problem. And there's, there's a few reasons why this could happen. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to explain all of those reasons why, but it could be too hot in your bin, it could not be ventilated well enough, or there might be some sort of a, a, a chemical or a material in the bin that the worms find to be really noxious and they just want to get away from. So they're, they're, that would indicate that something is really kind of wrong in your bin. Uh, so that is going to look different though. So if you only see, let's say, a couple dozen worms along the side and, and you're, you're, the, the walls are covered basically in worm castings, uh, like you see in this picture here, uh, that is not so much of a concern. Um, and that could be caused by one of, one of three reasons, I will tell you. Um, the first one is the most common one, and it's the fact that, that worms are attracted to moisture and uh, the stuff that you're putting in a worm bin is going to be wet and is going to essentially uh, cause condensation on the walls and on the lid of your worm bin. The worms are going to actually like this and want to go exploring in it and they, are, they will be perfectly happy to sit in, in, uh, you know, in condensation uh, and uh, not down in the bedding where you think they ought to be. Uh, so anytime that you have done a feeding recently or you have uh, added <clears throat> any water to your worm bin, uh, that is going to cause condensation, which is going to cause the worms to go to go exploring. Uh, the other issue is uh, vibration. Uh, worms are very sensitive to vibration. They get a little bit agitated by it. Um, I would say this is not an issue where they're going to try to all escape. Um, but if your worm bin is in, um, say, a utility room next to a washer and dryer, or maybe it's next to a window air conditioner, something that provides a kind of just a subtle but constant vibration, uh, the worms can get agitated by that and start to just sort of move in all directions. You would not see them ball up like they would if, if they were uh, really stressed out by something, uh, but you will see them kind of start to scatter. And the other thing that will make worms scatter, especially a certain species of worms, is a change in barometric pressure. So if you have an, uh, an oncoming thunderstorm, you, have a, you will have a, a drop, you won't necessarily be able to detect it, but the worms can, uh, a change in barometric uh, pressure, it's going to drop. Uh, when that happens, uh, a certain species of worms called, uh, called the Indian blue worm or Perionyx excavatus, they are very sensitive to these changes and they will sort of attempt this mass jailbreak. Again, they're not going to ball up like they would be if they were stressed, uh, but they will just sort of go exploring. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but it is, uh, it is a characteristic that's kind of unique to that species. Now the Indian blue worm is often sold as a red wiggler. So if you have red wigglers in your bin, uh, chances are, I don't want to say chances are, but it is, somewhat likely that you have uh, some or all Indian blue worms instead in your bin. And it's really tough for the new vermicomposter to tell the difference. And I'll, I'll cover that on a future episode, uh, how to tell the, the Indian blue and the red apart. But it's something that a, a new vermicomposter is not necessarily going to be able to, uh, to detect. Uh, so I will say though, that if you don't mind that tendency of a blue worm to sort of freak out 
temporarily uh, with the onset of a, 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 a thunderstorm, then uh, you will be very happy with how well that they vermicompost. They are very, they're they're really good vermicomposters. They may even be better than red wigglers. It's just they get a little bit flighty uh, sometimes. So. Anyway, guys, I hope this helps. Uh, this, uh, in most cases, worms crawling up the side of your bin is not a problem at all. Uh, it is a normal, uh, it is a normal uh, behavior. Uh, if you want to prevent this for some reason, um, then one thing, well, two things that you can do is to keep the lid off of your worm bin, or if you've got an urban worm bag, to open up the zipper. Uh, and then place a bright light over the top of the bin. So each of these things sort of accomplishes two different two different things. If you've got the lid open, then you're not going to have the condensation that forms on the walls that the worms are going to find attractive. Uh, but also that light is going to be repellent to worms and it's going to drive them back down into the bedding. Uh, they would prefer to be kind of unhappy in the bedding <laughs> than they would be to uh, be in light like they will avoid light uh pretty much uh, at all costs so those are two ways that you can prevent this if you even want to prevent it at all so i hope this was helpful and i will see you again on a future episode of coffee and compost we'll see ya bye oh and don't forget to subscribe all right see ya